Well, um, I was born in Gosforth in Northumberland, and um, my father was Indian Army, uh, firstly in the DLI, and then transferred to uh, the Indian Army when he was um, stationed out there because he was a very good polo player and very much wanted to play polo. And um, it was, I think, probably cheaper to do it there with, with an English, uh, with an English um, uh, sort of here, it, it wouldn't have been able to play at all. Um, so that was the reason we went back and forth. I think I was nine months old when we first went out to India and um, back and forth about three times, I think, uh, before the war. Um, I know we were stationed at one time, I think it was round about my fifth birthday up uh, near the Khyber Pass. Um, I mean, the, all the trouble with Afghanistan still going on. It has always done. They've always fought up there. Um, and um, I used to, we, when we came home, we used to stay uh, with grandparents, of course, because we didn't have an, uh, a house here. Um, and then, of course, when the war broke out, I understand from what I was told, that the Indian Army officers, because they had fought up on the northwest frontier, um, Norway was going to be invaded by the Germans and that they would be good troops and army to, to be able to fight in, in the mountains. And so my father came home and we followed, but for some reason we were dropped off in Marseille, this is 1939, and I think we were one of the last um, trains to come up. I don't know why we couldn't come round through the Bay of Biscay, but, um, and we came back to England that way. Was that immediately after the war had been declared, uh, or just before? I, I, yes, um, I, th I'm, I think it was 1939, I'm not... Yes. Not quite sure. I've forgotten the dates when the when war was. I mean, people were still detected. leaving the south of France, um, at, even in the middle of nineteen thirty nine. Yes, think. yes. yes. Um, I always remember my mother saying that that there was they ran out of water on the train, and um, people with babies had great difficulty with nappies and things. You know that. Um, uh, they were able to not able to do any washing and, and things like that. Just odd things I remember her saying about the the journey up. But um, uh, and then we were uh, living with my, um, my no, we joined my father. Uh, we were stationed in Liverpool, I think, mm -hmm. then, and that's um, I was seven. That was by the time it was nineteen forty. My birthday's in February. Um, and um, that's where I, I uh, made my first communion and had my tonsils out and, um, and learnt to ride a bike. And that was, uh, that was what, when you were seven, those were the sort of things that happened. Gosh. And um, my grandfather had just given me, my father's father, a little um, a red two wheeler bike, which I learnt to ride on a hill in Liverpool. <laughs> I don't know where we were in Liverpool, somewhere just outside, I think. And um, uh, unfortunately, because we were torpedoed later, that bicycle is now at the bottom of the sea. Oh dear. <laughs> well, we'll come on to that in a little, little, little while perhaps, but... Uh, yes. So you were in... Were you in Liverpool when it was decided that you ought to travel? It was their first... I was there when they had their first air raid, I remember that. Yes. Um, you might and then, remember. Um, then, of course, Norway fell. Uh, would yes. that be the end of 39? I'm not, not sure. Yes. And so uh, all the Indian Army people went back. But by then, um, the Suez Canal was closed. And so one had to go down via South Africa. And my father went off. And on the... 19th, I think, of September 1940, we sailed from Liverpool um, 
and we were, I think, one had to go up over the top of Ireland because they were worried about U-boats and things in, in the Southern Ireland. Um, but it, unfortunately, we were torpedoed on the 20th yes. at night time. It was nine o'clock at night, I think. I know it was dark. This was the SS City of Simla. The City of Simla, yes. That's right. Um, and when we had a lot of lifeboat instruction and, and everything, what, what to do. But on that particular night, um, when all the sirens came on and the ship was hit in the stern, and um, I was in bed, my mother, I remember, she was still dressed because she had navy blue slacks on, somehow I remember that. And um, I was in my nighty, so we were to go to upstairs to the saloon, the main saloon, and I know we were going up the gangway, up the stairs, and my mother's hands were shaking so much she couldn't tie my um, life belt on, which was called a May West in those mm. days. It was a sort of very big cork thing back and front with straps that had to be tied. And I can remember somebody stopping halfway down, a man, and tied me into mine. Um, and then when we went into the saloon and then one of the sailors came and said, women and children first to the life boats. So of course, We'd done training, so we knew where to go, but they had already lowered our lifeboat. Um, so it meant climbing down the rope ladder <laughs> and, um, you know, you had to do it uh, on your own. I think it must have been terrifying for my mother to see a seven-year-old go over the rails and climbing down and somebody held um, the rope ladder at the bottom and so that you could jump into the lifeboat. One or two people slipped, I think, between the ship and the lifeboat and had to be hauled out of the water. Many years later in London, my mother would always look up the side of Selfridges and say it had been like climbing down the side of Selfridges Probably in the walls. middle of the night, you know. Mm. And we were in a lifeboat, I don't know for how long, but it was in the night and I can remember singing, I can remember everybody saying the Lord's Prayer, but I also remember this one lady um, who kept pointing at my mother and saying it was not you know, fair that she still had me. And her son was in the stern where the torpedo hit and he was blown away. Mm, yeah. We were very lucky in that ship. Only three people lost their lives. I think one member of the crew and two of the passengers. Uh, so I understand from mm. um, seeing the statistics later. Um, and we were very, very lucky. We were picked up eventually uh, by another ship. Um, apparently the captain had known that the city of Benares, the sister ship of the city of Simla, had gone down a week before or a few days before um, and it was full of children being taken to America. Um, but many, well, I think a, a great number of them died because they were too small for their life belts. Also, mm the time factor to get them into them. Yeah. And I think the captain knew this and that's why he stopped, which was against orders. They weren't allowed to stop and pick people up. It was broad moonlight and he was a sitting target from mm. above and below. But I remember my mother told me, telling me that he lost his command because he did this for us, but I don't know, but I'm sure that's what she told me. But getting out of the lifeboat and up onto this ship, it meant going up the rope ladder again. <laughs> and I, that I remember so vividly, two sailors pulling me over the, the side onto the deck and one of them putting his coat round me. Um, and then the next person up 
was not my mother, and I remember being really, really frightened about that. But they said, look, we're bringing up all the children first, you know, and then your mother will be, will be up. So, um, but of course, I was in a nighty as the other children were. So um, I don't remember what we did about sleeping or anything like that. But I do remember the sailors giving us their thick white socks to put on because we hadn't any shoes or slippers or anything. And we played on the, um, the top of the holds which were covered in a heavy canvas. Mm -hmm. And was it last year or the year before, I went to see, look around the Cutty Sark. And it really took me back when I saw the, um, the holds. And I could feel the canvas that was covering it. It's funny that, I, I, mm -hmm. it's something I remember very vividly. And then um, we were um, brought back to Gorok. Uh, in in Scotland and the Red Cross met us and gave us clothes and money. Um, so I always remember the Red Cross now because that was very yes. good of them. I can remember so well that I was given a little green suit, a top and a bottom. I never wear green, it's not my colour, <laughs> but I can remember this green suit and I can remember the shoes these brown shoes with a sort of leather thing, like a thong thing on the top, with, with, with sort of strips of leather on it. I can see them so clearly. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. Weren't allowed to contact my mother's parents who lived in, um, in Tynemouth in Northumberland. Um, careless talk cost lives and all those sort mm. of things then. But we were given money and when we got back to Newcastle Station, I remember, so we must have gone by train, but don't really know. Um, and having to ring up and say we weren't on our way to, uh, on the ship. We were actually going to Burma, not to yes. India, um, because my father was at that time in Rangoon. Um, and so never got there again, mm. going down um, round South Africa and that way. Yes. Um, but did, never made it, of course. So, so, so you never went to Burma? No, no, yeah. no. But, um, what about your... And of course, we, oh, I must say, um, when we got to the docks in Liverpool, um, they opened some of the luggage. My mother was a meticulous packer. She could get a lot into a suitcase that other people... And um, they opened our trunks, or a couple of them, and muddled up the clothes inside. And I can remember being very annoyed about that because it took time to get them back in again, you know. Yes. That was one thing. And um, um, I'm trying to think what else I was going to that say was, that was about before going departure. to bed. Oh, yes. And then, of course, within a couple of days, Mm -hmm. All that was at the bottom of the sea. Yes. And there was no insurance or anything in those no. days, so didn't get anything back for it, of course. And of course that and, included the red bike. And the red bike. And on our way back from India in 39, one of the ports of call would be Aden at the bottom of the Red Sea yes. and then Port Side on the Suez Canal. And there's a shop there, I'm sure many people of my age would remember, it's called Simon Arts, and it was the shop to go to. And I was bought a doll, and I had that doll in my, um, in bed with me the, the night we were torpedoed. And that's something I regretted for a very long time. I mm. wanted to go back and get her. and. <laughs> Of course, oh, I wasn't right. allowed to. So yeah. she too is at the bottom of the sea, and 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 the red bike that I'd just been given um, by my grandfather. So, uh, as a child, those things are very important. Was the red bike and, ever replaced? Um, I suppose it must. I yes, because during the war, when we came back, when we did come back, we stayed with my grandparents all for the next five years in Tynemouth. Um, and um, I definitely had a bike because that's what we did. We rode everywhere on mm. our bikes. Yes. So I must have been given it. Um, but my 
grandparents, they had, my mother was the eldest of 10 children, not that they were all there in the house, but some were coming and going, you know, they were in the army, army or, or nursing, this different things. And so my mother and I had one room to ourselves in which we had absolutely everything. And so we had everything, as we accumulated the odd thing, um, of course we hadn't anything when we arrived, and we had to put things under the bed and on the top of wardrobes and things. And to this day, I can't bear putting anything under the bed or I, I have to have it tidied away because we lived like that for five years till we found our own. Uh, so you our own. And, and, and then, as I say, all, all our clothes were at the bottom of the sea. But in, in Rangoon, um, my mother had all our uh, china, glass, all, and silver, all that sort of thing. And of course the Japs walk in and so all that was gone as well. Mm. Except that I did hear that the servants um, buried some of the silver in, in the garden. So what happened to that and who dug it up later, I don't know. But mm. my mother used to say that this ring was the only thing that she had left after yes. the war. Um, because unfortunately my father met somebody else and um, so he, he left us. But um, So you were still in England when that happened, were you? Yes. yes, yes. I suppose it must have been over a period of time. I don't know mm. because, as I said to you before, Children, things when you were just told, I was just told he wouldn't be coming back, and I, I, I I've, you know, I was never given any any sort of explanation or anything about mm. it. Um, we did go back to India. In we were on the sea on VJ Day, which is August the fifteenth, mm -hmm. um, nineteen mm -hmm. um and we went back to India. My mother's sister and her husband uh, were living in Calcutta at that time. And we went and stayed with them. I never really knew why we went back. But I surmised, my mother used to be going off to Delhi a lot. And there were lots of tears and, and things. And she eventually had a nervous breakdown. I think possibly she hoped to win my father back because I do know that he was in India by that time. He escaped um, from, from the jungle um, with great difficulty, I, I, I would imagine, you know. Um, uh, and, and he was back in India. Um, so he was there in that year, that 45, 46. I, mm. don't, I can't remember when, when they moved the Japanese out of Burma again, so I, I don't remember the dates of that at all. But it presumably, it was before VJ Day, I suppose. Um, or, yes, yes. You see, it must yes, have been. So that's yes. why I was back. So I think that must be why we we um, we went back again, and mm. then we came home in May nineteen forty six, and came back yes. to England. Um, but um, although that was must have been terrible for my for my mother and i um i used to hear grown ups talking um and mentioning a little girl's name and i got it into my head that my father had left us because he preferred another little girl to me and that was it was because I'm, I'm, I do think it's so good now that children are told what's happening and they see their father and mm. their mother and, you know, it is much better than not knowing anything and, and, and picking up totally the wrong details, you know, mm. which, of course, wasn't true at all. Um, but it did knock my confidence for, for many years. Um, but out of that came a very good thing because um, about 12 years ago or probably a bit more than that, um, a cousin of mine brought me some photographs from, my father had eight brothers and sisters, 
and he was the executive for one of his sisters and she'd got these photographs and he brought them and said, I think this is your brother. And I, I couldn't believe it, you know. And um, I didn't do anything about it because I still had aunts and uncles and people I didn't, I thought they might think I, and my mother died in 1966. And I thought they might think I was being a bit disloyal or something, I don't know. Anyway, about 12 years ago, I heard a story almost the same as mine um, about, um, actually it was a, a sister this person found and how it had been so exciting, you know, to find her, her father had left them and had another family and she hadn't known. And um, I discovered that my, one of my daughters lives in Bristol and I discovered uh, that this, the, this name was in Bath. My brother now um, kept his mother's name. I never knew why that was, but it was the only one in the book. It's very unusual, the name. And um, I was going down to Bristol and I thought, I'm going to write. There's nobody now. Everybody has died. I'm not going to mm. hurt anybody. And I wrote and said, I think I might be your sister. Um, and would you be interested in, in us meeting up? If not, I wish you lots of luck. And um, so I posted the letter straight away without thinking any more about it. And I got an immediate reply. And he had been brought up with my father and his mother, uh, but he always thought that his mother's first husband was his father. He never knew that Andrew, my father, um, was his as well until after his mother died and he just discovered that in actual fact Andrew was his father and he was trying on the internet to find this family, you know, um, when he got my letter. So he, he was really, really <laughs> delighted about that and we met up about 10 days later and it was really wonderful to you know and we've been in contact ever since so that's that's lovely so that was one very positive thing I, mm. I had no brothers and sisters so now I have a half brother I know but um that came out of of that so that was that was good <laughs> yes indeed yes uh, just going back um to the war itself, and you were in the northeast of England at that time. Yes, yes. Do you have any recollections whilst you were, because you, you were living with your grandparents yes. all through that period. Do you have recollections about what was going on with the war at that well, time? Well, um, we were torpedoed on the 20th of September. And when we went back to my grandparents, um, my mother had great friends, uh, a GP and his wife and, and children, living um, in Martin, outside Middlesbrough. And half term in October came up and they said, look, um, she had three girls, one of them exactly the same age as myself. And she said, look, why don't you come and stay with us for, for half term? Um, away from the bombs on Tyneside, which were every night we were up, we had mm. to give the dining room over to, was it the Anderson Shelter? Yes. Big metal table thing with yes. wire sides. And I can remember they always had, uh, there was always chewing gum in there to eat <laughs> if, every night. Was every that a night. public one? Or we was used, that, I beg your pardon? Was that a public one or was that no, in no, your in, We had to give up our, my grandmother had to give up the dining room in oh. order to put this great big thing oh, right. and we used to go down and uh, and sit in this sh shelter and then back up every night um, and my grandfather used to chortle when we got back up he would not get up and go down and one night uh, the a bomb fell at the top of the road where the golf course was and he was literally blown out of bed but not hurt at all so. But he still never went in the shelter. Um, anyway, we we went to stay with these friends in in uh, near Middlesbrough, um, and of course they had lots of clothes that I could have. They passed on, and when it came to the end of half term, 
um, they persuaded my mother to go to let me go to boarding school in Richmond in Yorkshire, um, which was much safer than Tyneside. And they rang up the, it was a convent, they rang the nuns and said, oh, I had no uniform or anything, of course, but would they take me? And that's how I, I, I went, uh, literally at half term, and eventually my uniform arrived from London. But um, the nuns always told me that I was terrified of water. It took them a long time to persuade me to go for swimming lessons. Yes. Um, we used to, we didn't have a swimming pool at school. We used to swing swim in Catrick at what was the Sand Soldiers' Home. It was where all the um, those who'd been wounded they wore bright blue sort of uniform. I can <laughs> see that now. Mm. And um, and we used to swim there. And eventually, I. I got to love swimming, so that was good. But that would have um, gone back to when you were torpedoed, presumably. Exactly, yes, yes. yes. I think I, I don't like deep water even now. No. Um, I love to swim, and uh, but um, I'm not very fond of very deep water. It's something that yeah. makes me stand back, I think, mm. a bit, mm. yes. So you went to boarding school. Yeah, and uh, then... Um, that was for the five years of the war. And then, as I say, we went back to, to India uh, for that year. And then I went back to the same school and didn't leave until 1951. So, Holly, uh, so you were there quite a long I, time. A long time, yes. 11 years or 10 yes. years, yes. 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 So, so they, they catered for youngsters, right? well, for, for 10 years' worth of education? Indeed, yes. Wow. Yes. Um, yes, it was um, made lots of friends that I still keep up with now. We still have mm. old girls' reunions every every two years and, and things, which is, is great. But so that was lucky, I think, because I was an only child. I think it was a good thing. Mm. For me to be, I, mean, I had friends and things. In fact, it was my mother that used to be in tears on the station when I went back. And I used to be quite, you know, think, oh dear, I'm longing to go back and be with all my friends. Because you know, yes. when you're at boarding school, you don't have friends at home, particularly if it's not your own home and no. you haven't established, a, you know, grown up there or anything. Mm. Um, so... Um, Callous yeah. youth, really. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you left school in 1951. Yes. What happened then? I went to um, the RVI in Newcastle to do physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I met my husband, uh, I'm trying to think, oh, 1954, the end of 54, I think or 55, which uh, totally restored my confidence and things. It was wonderful to have uh, a wonderful husband who, mm -hmm. you know, only cared about me and, and things, and then had three lovely children. So I'm very lucky, and I've got eight grandchildren now. So from being just me, mm -hmm. we was quite a lot of us, yes. which is lovely. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, so you were married, I think, in 1956? 1956, yes, right. yes, in September. And you, did you stay in Tyne Mouth at that yes. time? Yes, um, we, we had a, a flat down near, near the sea to start off with and, uh, and then um, watched a house. They, they did a lot of building. During the war, when I was with my grandparents in Tyne Mouth, um, I used to ride on Sundays at a farm and I had to walk along this farm track to get to the farm mm -hmm. to ride. And our house was built uh, sort of uh, almost exactly where this farm track and the farm used to be. It's totally mm -hmm. gone now. Completely new housing estate. And we used to wander around each night and watch the bricks go up. But it was so strange because they'd had all the ACAC guns in this field. And um, our house had one of the concrete bases for the 
in the garden, at the front mm -hmm. garden. And so we were rather lucky. They said there was no way they could remove this no. emplacement thing. And so they brought an awful lot of topsoil and, and rose trees and put those for us. So we, we didn't have to do anything about the front garden. It was where these guns had been that I used to wander along past during mm -hmm. the war. It was really quite strange that. Yes. But that's how it... Uh, and we turned out to be living on that very bit. Yeah, so that was that was lovely. Um, my husband uh, was, I was at school in Richmond, and actually so was he, but many years before, he was at Richmond School, which was a boarding school then. Mm -hmm. And um, during the war, his, he, he had been, uh, his parents lived in Hexham, and he was at prep school there. And then he went to Richmond School um, because his, I don't think he was boarding there. And then his father, who was a bank manager, um, was sent to Richmond and he did the bank in, uh, in Catrick. And they were there while I was at school, but Ian was 13 years older than I was. And so he was in at the beginning of the war um, mm. at the age of 19. It was so funny that his parents lived there while I was at school and, um, you know, the coincidence was, was very strange, really. Um, and then he was in the desert, he was a desert rat, and he was away for five years. Um, Are you able to, to recount any of the uh, experiences that your husband had in the desert Yes, rat? one. Um, which was very strange. Uh, he was. He said he was lucky. He was never uh, taken prisoner of war for. I think he. he um, and then he said, except for a matter of hours, and it was the Italians who put a whole lot of them, from what I remember him saying, in a cave. But somebody, one of the. So just went to the back of the cave and discovered that if you walked far enough, it opened out onto the beach. <laughs> so they all quietly escaped. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know. I wish, you know, I'd written down more about that. But so that was his just few hours of being there. And also um, he, he got jaundice at one time. And so um, he was... Uh, now, where would he be? On, on the beach in Egypt, and he was attached to an American um, lot of the army, um, and he, because he could ride, he was asked if he would exercise the Arab horses. So he had really quite a good few weeks at that point, um, exercising the horses on the beach. Mm. So, but. I wish I'd asked him more, you know, time goes by and you don't talk about it, and I really don't know. He was at Monte Cassino, but I don't yes. know. See, people didn't talk about, about the war at all then, of experiences much. And now I wish I'd, I'd, um, I'd you know, asked him more. As he died in uh, 25 years ago, in 1993. Um, yes. But, um, so... Uh, haven't got many reminiscences of, of him in the war. Um, going, going back to your own war experience, yeah. I mean, there were things like rationing and so on. Did we, do you have any involvement with yes, that? Yes, I, I can remember distinctly on the um, table in the refectory at school, and we all had a saucer, um, and on it was a square four ounces of horrible margarine. <laughs> I never touch margarine now two ounces of butter and your flag in the top. And my, my school number was 109, on, on, written on the flag, a little plastic flag thing, <laughs> and a little jar of sugar. I, can't, I think there was four ounces of sugar in that. And you had to make that last the week. And that was actually the ration in those days. Because when we came back from India in 1946, um, we were given a booklet yes. um, and I remember my mother 
because mo everybody else in the ship had been in India during the war years. And we, because she was invalid at home, um, we were very lucky. And she was the only person in the ship who'd been in England during the war. And she was asked if she'd give a little talk. And I remember her saying what the ration was. You know? <laughs> um, and do sort of one egg and make a, a, a bosom pal of your, your butcher and you might get the extra <laughs> sausage and things. Yes. Um, but and the blackout and all the windows um, in the house had to have masking tape or what it was called then mm. uh, crisscrossed so that if there was a blast, um, at least they'd sort of hold together even if yes. they cracked. Um, and and the blackout curtains, of course, and the wardens going going past um, in the slightest chink of light, you know, was they put those knock on out. the door mm. and. Um, to go out at night, we had little, we had torches and we had um, sort of green tissue paper that you had to put it under the glass, you know, so that you, it, it barely shone, but at least you weren't falling over. Because I suppose there weren't any street lights or anything. But no. I remember my torch with its little green piece of paper in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I don't, I, um, I don't. Remember, we'd, we weren't, um, we didn't appear to be starving in any way. I mean, the food at boarding school is not good anyway, but mm. um, I think we were always fed, fed enough, you know. You, you don't think that the diet that you um, were subjected to during the war would have had any effect on your, your future life at all? Uh, well, we've often talked about that with friends, you know, that I was at school with then. And... I suppose we had a, a fairly balanced diet, you know, there was just so much. We had that ghastly Halliborange stuff <laughs> that they gave uh, to babies. I can't think what it did to their insides. Um, it, and they made it into a sort of marmalade. Uh, it, it was very bitter, and I can remember that. And the other thing that made life palatable, uh, food palatable at school was HP sauce. We all had HP sauce, <laughs> in, you know, to, to um, try and make it taste better. But hmm. I think there was plenty of it, you know. I suppose it was perhaps a lot of potatoes and, and stuff. But um, I, don't, I don't remember the vegetables. And I... But, but you know, it was it was it was okay. I think we had um, uh, Italian nuns in the kitchen who really didn't know how to to cook our our food. You know, the, I remember the rice being cooked as though it was arborio rice. You know, very mm. very sticky and horrid. It's not yes. not the way we do it now. Nice and fluffy. Yeah. And things. In but, interesting, you had Italian nuns. I mean, weren't they affected by internment? Uh, well, that's what I'm. I don't know why I think that. They were definitely foreign nuns. Um, it is a Belgian order, actually, but a lot of the the nuns were English um, and a lot of um, ordinary staff, you know. Um, uh, they were English, but yes, that's strange. Mm. I don't know why we always thought they were Italian. Perhaps they weren't. Perhaps they were Spanish. Or, but they certainly were um, not English in the kitchen. And definitely not very good at cooking. By well, the sounds well of I'm sure they were. <laughs> they'd had the right stuff to cook with. <laughs> oh, dear. You did physiotherapy, I think you said. I did, yes. At, at, well, did that become a career or did that suddenly no, come to No, unfortunately, I didn't finish my training. I got married. Yes. And it's been... The one big regret I wish I had. I loved it. So if you'd had your time again. Yes. Yeah. You that was, I it. think it's a great job for any yes. anybody. I wish that I had managed to, um, you know, to uh, uh, carry on with that. But hmm. um, I didn't, so. Can you think of any other things that you would like to mention? Um, um, I, I don't know why, talking about food, I suddenly remembered that when we went back in 1945 to India, and we, we uh, 
were in, it took three weeks then by sea, of course, you couldn't yes. go by plane. And um, we landed in Bombay. But my aunt that we were going to stay with was in Calcutta, and it's two days across India by train, no air conditioning or anything. Mm. And I can remember having this zinc bath on the floor in our compartment. And every so often, we'd stopped endlessly at stations, um, we would take on a great big block of ice and one kept, you know, tins of juice or grapefruit and things on that to try and keep it cold. Yes. Just just, just thinking of, uh, of very, food, you very, know, yes. Very practical. Yes, yes, yes. I can remember that very well. Mm. A couple of questions, really. One is, do you think that the experiences that you had, I know you mentioned that you had a fear of swimming as a result of the, of, of the torpedoing of the boat, boat. Um, but were there any sort of effects that you can think of that, that um, as a result of the war that, that may have influenced you later on? Um. Other than, as I said, you know, with my father going, I, yes. you know, always... Um, well, of course, that was absolutely a la disaster. Yes, la lacked um, a confidence. Yes. I never again won prizes at school or anything. No. Um, when we came back after that year away, yes. I had to go into a class below, of course, Mm. And that to, was to fine eventually, up. but I I, yes. I found that very difficult to start yes. with. Um, yes. But I, ha I had a, a terrible fear of being disliked, or, or you know, mm. which I wasn't. But I, I mean, um, I always tried to smile and put my best mm. foot forward because um, I had this sort of strange feeling, as I say, that my father had left us for another little girl that he preferred, yes. which is such such a shame because that wasn't wasn't it at all. And I understand no. now that it was the war and we weren't there and mm. Mark's mother was and um, um and he I think he was born I've forgotten what year in nearly in in the forties anyway. Um, um so and and the the child's name that I kept hearing the little girl's name is his sister, right. um, his mother and her first husband's child. You know, so, 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 not so there was to you. a child, but yes. it was nothing to do with my father no, preferring no. her to me or anything like no, that. So no, no, no. Um, that that certainly I think had a very big influence mm. uh, for some time. Yes. But as I say, when I met my lovely husband, all that changed. <laughs> yes, yes. And, uh, and, and there was a future ahead of you. Indeed, yes. Yes, yes indeed. Um, so, so that was, mm. that was good. My, my father had, I know uh, from my brother now, um, one or two odd experiences. He, he was with Field Marshal Slim in Burma. Yes. And they were good friends. And I've got uh, a letter that... Uh, Phil Marshall wrote to my um, father's sister when, when he died yes. and um, um, I think he, what, what happened he was, he was going along at one point in the jungle and came across a chap with a bow and arrow and everything and thought oh well, this is it I'm going to be you know shot and my head's going to be shrunk and hung, hung on a wall. <laughs> and to his astonishment, the chap put his bow and arrow behind him, walked forward, shook hands, and in perfect English, greeted my father. And it turned out that he'd actually been studying in Oxford, but had been called back to his tribe uh, when, you know, when the war started. So that was, that was a funny experience. I mean, that's not the sort of uh, story you could write in fiction and get away with. Oh, well, exactly. <laughs> and another incident, he was in the jungle and he came across a bungalow and, you know, sitting on the veranda was a chap, an Englishman, 
uh, sitting having afternoon tea. And he was, to his astonishment, invited to go and sit and have a cup of tea with this chap. And, um, and then said, well, um, I really must get on, you know, get on with the war. And, and just in the middle of the jungle, all of, all of a sudden, and another incident he had, apparently, he liked to drive. And so his driver was in the passenger seat mm -hmm. and a sniper shot at the car. But it was the driver that got killed. He was shooting at the officers, yes. yes. And, uh, and uh, so he was, oh he was lucky there and did escape and I think was very ill, um, you know, when he eventually got back to... Um, to India. Oh, and another thing, um, my brother told me um, that I don't know whether you've heard of Elephant Bill. He's yes. written, yeah. Well, he was, um, I think he was in about his 70s when that it, Burma was uh, under trouble from the Japs. Uh, but he was asked to go to deal with the elephants who saved so many lives, getting people across rivers and things like mm -hmm. that. And he'd trained elephants and, and all sorts in other parts of the world. And, in you know, I've got his book and it's, it's really most interesting. Mm. Um, and my father uh, worked with him for a little while to learn how to deal with the elephants in order to make them useful to getting people out of Burma. Mm. So that was, that was another, another thing. I was, it's, it's sad that you weren't part of that. Yes, I, I mean, the euphoria when I met Mark was terrific, you know, it was mm. just so amazing. We sort of clicked straight away and he knew nothing about the family. I was able to t tell him about all the aunts and uncles that he would have had, you know, that had now died. And I took him up to North Nantes where our father is buried and where uh, my grandfather, my father's uh, father lived um, and where we used to go for so many leaves and different things, you know. He was lovely. He was a very much, he looked like Father Christmas with a big white beard mm. and I was very fond of him. And he was very fond of my mother. Um, and um, i forgotten what I was saying. <laughs> um, yes, I was, uh, it was about, um, uh, you know, sh uh, not being able to share. Uh, yes, I was able to share, yes. share with him and show him the, the house, you know, mm. um, which has now been made into several smaller ones and things. Yes. But I um, was able to show him all that, which he, he knew nothing about. And I now am a bit sad to think we missed out, you know, as children. I never knew him then. But um, so the euphoria goes a little bit because it would have been lovely to have to have yes. grown up together, but there we are. Yes. So at least I see him now, and he has two boys and two grandchildren. Mm. Um, so uh, my um, daughter uh, that lives quite near him, she sees him more than I do, you know. So yes. this, this, yes. is, this is great, yes. Given your time again, and also thinking about the generations that are now growing up, what advice would you think you would give to them uh, for a, a successful and happy future? Well, I think it's got to be give and take, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. you've got, you know, you've got to work at any marriage or anything. It's, it's you know, or, uh, you know, you've got to, to just, just give and take and and talk about things rather yes. than I must say with my husband um, if ever there was something to but well, not argue up you know something that was a problem we never let the sun go down on it no. never I can say that in all truthfulness we never um, let things rancor for several days or anything mm. like that. I can't think of anything that did, but you know, I, can, I, I do remember we always talked it through and I'm sure that's, that's, that's the, the way to talk it mm. through mm. and um, not build up an animosity about things. 
because it's sometimes difficult to to break through it afterwards. Yes. Yes, um, uh, and I so many sadly um, marriages fall apart nowadays. I don't. I suppose it's because people are able to move about more and they meet more people and everything. But always to explain things. I mean, to children, I think it's better for them that they they know the situation and then they'll deal mm. with it. Children, mm. if you tell them straight, then they will, will deal with it. It just becomes yes. a practicality. I mean, that was definitely something that was missing for you. Oh, absolutely, mm. yes. And and for Mark too, he knew. Mm. No, to think that his, my father, my father died in 1965, the year before my mother. Mm. I think, I think she had always, in the background, had a faint hope that she might see him again, I, she, mm. you know, or something. Because when she heard about his death, she gave up, really. Yes. And she had cancer, I know. But I think she didn't attempt to fight it or anything. It, it, yes. I know she... I just get that feeling, you mm. know, that it was, it changed her in that last year. Yes. Um, so... Um, it was easy enough to say, what if uh, the war hadn't taken place? Yes. And would they've, yes. But one just, one just, just uh, doesn't know, does one really? No. I mean, I, mm. I can, I don't remember much about him, but I do remember uh, perhaps from the age of five and six, we had a... Uh, a cocker spaniel, and I and my, my my father was a great rugby player, as was his brothers, um, and um, as were his brothers, and and this spaniel, it was in a, a place called Sialkot in in India, and it had ter terribly long ears, and he used to put his scrum cap on on the dog whenever it had its uh, its dinner. Now that's a very strong memory as well. I can <laughs> to stop see. the ears from falling yes, in the dinner. Yes yes, 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 yes. So I remember him with, um, you know, only, I suppose, because we were army, you know, we, mm. we must have spent a lot of time apart anyway, but you mm. followed the drum. We, as I say, we went up and, and we were stationed in Kohat, which is up near the northwest frontier. I can remember that as a sort of dark place. I don't know why I remember that. And I remember, I think it was my fifth birthday, and the cook made me a sugar spun house with fruit in it. I can see that. Mm. Uh, you know, just odd things like that yes. that one remembers. Yes. Um, but I never remember him being in any way unpleasant or I never remember no. my mother and father quarrelling or anything. But I, of course I have so vague memories, but it, it, they're quite pleasant ones, you know, yes. of, of with the dog and, and things. Um, mm. I mean, the picture of the, the dog with the ears up, <laughs> yes. the, I mean, that's going to linger with me forever, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I could see it now. Yes. I could yes. see the material it was made of, that scrum mm. cap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Elizabeth, I think we'll, we'll, we'll finish at that point, but thank you very much well, for Well, thank for you for coming, that. Michael. Thank you. Uh, it's been very well, interesting. I hope it's interesting, yes. Oh, it is. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much indeed. My, my grandchildren are always saying, please write it down, Granny. So <laughs> this they will be pleased about. <laughs>